There's no substitute for practical real-world experience in any field across the curriculum, from one end of the campus to the other. Next, we visit the Homeland Security Education Center, the first facility of its kind in the Midwest. The 65,000 square foot building serves as a multi-jurisdictional training center for regional and national emergency response agencies. The HEC is home to COD's criminal justice and fire science programs, as well as the COD Police Department and the Suburban Law Enforcement Academy. The Homeland Security Education Center uh, really is a paradigm shift in education, uh, and in particular higher education. And what we offer here is students the opportunity uh, to study the theory of criminal justice and then put that to practice in the labs that we have, such as the one uh, that we're sitting in here today, which is the Forensic Science Lab. So we can discuss the theory of forensic science. We can even discuss the practice of forensic science as it relates to the actual hard sciences, or we can talk about the actual practicum of the police uh, gathering evidence. And then we can allow the students to actually practice that right here on site at the Homeland Security Education Center. So we're bringing theory to practice and that's what we're doing. And it's something uh, that we always knew belonged in education, but in traditional education, you only sit in classrooms that has a whiteboard and PowerPoint, and you can talk about it, but there was really no place to actually practice it. We have really four, if you include the immersive lab, uh, which is the street scene, five uh, laboratories that students can work in and learn practicum. Let's start with the um, the auditorium which serves as a lecture hall and a mock courtroom. Now you can go in there and you can actually see what takes place in a courtroom. Uh, we have a judge's bench, uh, we have a juror's box, we have places where defense and prosecutors uh, can sit and show their evidence and it is a state-of-the-art facility. That's one of the immersive labs that we have. The second is the one that we're sitting in. It is a fully uh, uh, equipped forensic science laboratory that will allow students to study uh, evidence collection, to learn how to, uh, to do uh, and, uh, fingerprinting, uh, it will look at uh, blood spattering, we will talk about death investigations, uh, we have uh, things inside this lab that allows them to uh, do uh, uh, impressions, foot impressions, tire impressions. These are all practical things that they can use as criminal investigators in the field. It also doubles uh, as a uh, science laboratory to introduce students to uh, the high-tech world of, of forensic science. Well, this lab uh, allows them uh, to take that collected, uh, collected evidence and begin to analyze it as scientists would in an actual laboratory. So they really get an idea of what's on the practical end for police officers in terms of evidence collection and then what's on the practical end for those scientists who analyze that uh, on the other end. They're two different fields and we want to make sure that we're not confusing students for which field that they want to go into. We also have a computer science lab which uh, allows us to teach our computer and crimes courses and uh, other courses to be developed. As we all know, technology is changing the way that criminal justice uh, is uh, performed in the field. And we want to put our students in a position to understand that in our computer crimes lab and how technology uh, is working for them and also working against them. And they have to know what that is. Then we have uh, the emergency management lab which allows us to teach many of our Homeland Security courses in terms of uh, intelligence and Homeland Security, uh, border transportation uh, and private security uh, to show them how emergency management works uh, in the field in terms of put putting uh, plans together and responding to man-made and natural disasters. That is one of the most important uh, labs I feel that's in this building because not only can we um, discuss things amongst ourselves here, but we can show students how that information is shared in real time by maybe even sharing our classrooms with other classrooms around the country, if not around the world, with the technology that we have in that room. 
And then of course we have the street scene where we can go down and do practical applications of what police officers do on a day-to-day -day basis uh, in dealing with uh, communities and crime, uh, whether it's traffic stops, whether it's um, robberies or burglaries, whether it's just uh, talking to a citizen on a street. We can show how that works in real time. That couldn't have been done six months ago. That couldn't have been done six months ago. And I don't know of any other facility uh, in terms of higher education that can offer that. I just don't know of any. The Homeland Education Center is going to provide the instructors with the flexibility that we haven't had in years past. Being in the older side of campus in the one-story building, we are very limited not only on classroom space, but also other resources for bringing the education in the classroom to reality and developing their practical skills. Now with this uh, facility here in the inside street scene, things that we had to tell the students, okay, I need you to imagine this when they were going into a practical situation, we can actually put together out here, have them stage in the classroom, and then give them their pre-call information, and then they come out here and run through the actual scenario with real vehicles, real patients, and real equipment. Again, we're gonna be able to bring vehicles in here and set them up like they were in a motor vehicle collision, and then the students would come from the classroom or the ambulance area over there like they have arrived on the scene, gather their equipment from the ambulance, come out here, assess the patients, treat the patients, and get them ready for transport, including getting them into the ambulance and continuing their care in there. Previously, once we had the victims on a stretcher, that would be it, that would be the end of the scenario, and then we would just talk about what their ongoing care would be en route to the hospital. Now we can take it one step further, get them in the back of the ambulance, so they get a sense of what it's like to be back there, not only with a patient on the stretcher, but also two or three other crew members back there in the confined space. Uh, up above the street scene, we have apartments. We're gonna be configuring those compartments with furniture, and again, we're gonna be able to send those students on a scenario to where they have to walk through the building, go up the elevator with some of their equipment, because that's what we have in the apartment buildings, and then go and find their patient, treat the patient, and then figure out how to bring them down here to the street where their ambulance is located. Uh, the smoke room we also have set up uh, into a couple of different rooms with the movable panels that are in there. We're able to change the configuration daily if we need to. So not only can we use that as an apartment, so to speak, to find victims, but also that has the ability to be smoked up to reduce visibility. So some of our firefighter classes, we're going to be able to stay here on campus and not have to go off campus when we start teaching them search and rescue techniques in a smoke-filled building. Training tower out back is four stories tall. We're going to be able to do rappelling, standpipe operations, and also uh, below grade rescue because there are sano tubes that are going to go from the top of the four story tower all the way down to the bottom. So we can uh, get into more of our technical training when it comes to those confined space and below grade rescues, as well as above grade rescue, which we've never been able to do here on campus before. The feedback on the building has been phenomenal. Students come here and can't believe, they see it in picture, they see it online, but then they come here and see it in real life and they ask, are those fire hydrants real? Yeah, they flow water. Uh, how about these rooms up here? Yeah, those windows open, we're going to be throwing ladders, we're going to be going up there and simulating how to rescue uh, victims from a fire. There's going to be a lot of things that before were just done on a chalkboard or a dry erase board and now we're going to give them the practical hands-on training that they've so desperately needed over the years because our profession is very technical in nature and you have to have that balance between the classroom setting as well as getting the hands-on training that they, that they need to be successful in this career and now the, the sky's the limit with whatever we want to do with this building we're going to be able to. The reaction of students, uh, they are just awed by the building. Uh, they look around and they peek in every room because it was designed to allow them to do that. Look and see what you can do. And uh, they're asking us, well, what does this do? And what class is this for? And, and can I get that for my degree? And I want to be in this class. And so we're getting a lot of that reaction from students. And they're really excited about uh, what the College of DuPage has done for them here.